A spitting image puppet of Margaret Thatcher has been put up for auction. The former Conservative Prime Minister was a prominent target for the satirical show, which was a huge ITV hit in the 1980s and 1990s. I'm sick of you staring in the mirror like a moaning mini going on about how the country is going down the pan. But it's true. What about your wartime hero? Did he falter when things got tough? No, he topped himself in a Berlin bunker. So, what's happening to political satire now in 2019? Uh, join me to discuss that, uh, the comedian and impressionist John Culshaw, who is, one, is now one of the stars of uh, Radio 4's Dead Ringers. And from Chorley Wood, we're joined by Tim Laws, the general manager of the Prop Store, uh, which is auctioning the Mrs Thatcher puppet. Uh, uh, and uh, Mr Laws uh, got the puppet there. I think you've actually got 40 spitting images or something like that. Show us it a bit. That's correct. We've got... Four yeah, we've got 41 um, spitting image puppets going up for auction on the 14th of February at PropStore.com and we're very excited about it. What sort of price do you think they're going to raise? Uh, bidding starts from £100 on most of the lots, with the exception of um, the Right Honourable Lady here, who's, who's going to start at £2,000. And, uh, I mean, there's a bit of a market in these uh, puppets already. Uh, what's the top prices they've hit so far? Um, they have gone as much as £10,000 in the past, in the, in the long distant past, so we're, we're very interested to see um, how well these will fare in the market. Is it a bit spooky being standing there next to um, a caricature of Margaret Thatcher? Uh, it's a little bit odd, but I think she's looking good. I think she's, she's looking as good as she did uh, back in the day, so it's, it's not as scary as it could be. Who's that looking over her shoulder? I don't remember him from Spitting Image. Oh, he's from he's from Highlander. That's a whole, whole different whole different thing. And when's the when's the auction? Auction uh, bidding starts uh, on Valentine's Day on the fourteenth of February uh, at PropStore.com, and bidding is open for two weeks. And um, bidding starts to close on the twenty seventh of February. Okay, Mr. Lawrence, thank you very much indeed. Uh, John, it brings back Thank happy you. memories, doesn't it? It certainly does. It certainly does. I mean, the the sort of the violence of the caricatures of Spitting Image, those wonderful grotesque church gargoyles, were a comment on the characters before a word of the script had even been written. Because I mean, Fluck and Lord started. I mean, they started out as caricaturists, didn't they? They used to make these yeah. models for the Sunday yes. Times and other newspapers. And it was very interesting hearing Steve Allen's wonderful. Uh, Margaret Thatcher voice there, his great, great skill in how he judged that. You know, you couldn't have a simple, normal Margaret Thatcher, That's that, that sort of calm tone. It had to be really over the top to match the caricatures of the puppets, and he judged that so, so beautifully. Do you think your show would be there if it wasn't for Spitting Image now? Well, I think um, this, this talk of Spitting Image coming back, and certainly on Dead Ringers on Radio 4, you do feel a sense with the political climate now that the audience does turn to the show mm. to crystallise the stories, just to make some sense of it, and also throw some yeah. rotten tomatoes at the same time. I mean, the sense is even more difficult for you on the radio because you don't have the visual images, so the voices have got to really cut through to the public. Yes, exactly, and it, it, al it also allows for that certain kind of writing that you get on radio, very incisive theatre of the mind. It allows you to have a certain tone of comedy, which lends well with Dead Ringers, a cross between Private Eye and the Beano yeah. almost. And Spinning Image, I think, I'm right saying, was, was one of those kind of uh, diaspora shows where an enormous number of talents who went on to do things oh came together. Oh my goodness, yes, you look, you look at the writers, uh, Ian Hislop, for example, uh, and the voice artists, uh, Harry Enfield, yeah. Steve Coogan, uh, many people have passed through uh, the, the, the corridors of Spitting Image on their way to other things. Did you work there at all? I did. It was, uh, Spitting Image was, was uh, my first job on television, uh, just after the Thatcher era. Yes, yeah, so the John Major time was when I joined. And also, <laughs> you know, Tony Blair. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could see the puppeteers working. The Tony Blair puppet had to work very hard indeed, yeah. almost like C-3PO. And were you assigned characters? Was that how it worked? Yes, exactly. The, the topical stories would be done on the, yeah. on the Friday. And but would it um, always be the same person doing Blair or the same? Yeah, once you've, once you've got your character, yeah. you, you tend to stay with it. So who were yours? Um, on Spitting Image, I did, um, let me see, uh, Kenneth Clark, 
uh, Chris Eubank, Victor Meldrew, Frank Bruno, uh, Michael Portillo. <laughs> he was one of mine in his defence secretary days before great railway journeys. Um, so it, it was a wonderful place to, to start your career. You know. Is there a bit sort of Sunset Boulevard about it, you know, um, uh, Norman Desmond saying the pictures have got small. I mean, have, have the people you caricature got small compared to the Thatchers? And the... There was a time, certainly the David Cameron and you know, Nick Clegg era was a little bit like that. But then in came Boris. Boris was the quantitative easing amongst bland impersonation characters. And then Farage and now Corbyn and Trump. My goodness gracious, you know, you can now get more caricatured than that. So, um, the, yeah. the character I mean, the levels. argument, of course, is you've got a character like Trump or indeed Boris, and you can't make it up. I mean, yeah, I mean, quite, I mean quite. How can you how can you satirise Donald Trump? Uh, it's very good for the writers because they go much more specific. Uh, they go on his bluster, the things he tries to cover up when he gets caught out from his ignorance, and there's something very satisfying about that. The the jab is even stronger somehow. What they've got, at, and we talk about at the beginning, what they've got at Spitting Image are these really beautiful puppets. And yeah. a lot of shows around the world in America and France, uh, Germany, I know, copied it, but none of them had anything as beautiful as these puppets. Exactly. The, the caricatures on other shows were too tame. It almost looked like a, you know, you could think of it like a kid's programme almost. Uh, the, I once saw, um, it was Gerald Scarf, I once watched him uh, doing a, a, just a sketch caricature of Margaret Thatcher and the motions were like this, you know. It was as if he was conducting an orchestra to, str to know what to stretch and to exaggerate it so perfectly. So do you think we're the best at satire here? Oh yes, absolutely. That uh, mix of being very incisive and also very cynical and that satisfying feeling of calling things out and bursting bubbles, yes. I mean, have you tried to explain your programme to foreigners? <laughs> I think n now, I, I, I think um, that sort of attitude of British satire is much more universal, certainly in, in, in America since... Uh, uh, John Stewart, for example, that attitude is permeating now. I think uh, there is a, a global thirst for that cynical sort of hard-hitting. And who's the, who's the big challenge? Who who has nobody managed to get as yet? Uh, I think it was always David Cameron, really. You know, quite anodyne, quite bland. You know, that sort of repeated hand gesture. Wanted to get the interview over as quickly as possible, and then run away to Tuscany, <laughs> <laughs> or Nice, as described by Danny Dyer. And difficult, well, yes, exactly. And we're going to that. And um, difficult to tell the difference between him and George Osborne, I suppose. Yeah, George Osborne had a sort of a understated, sinister quality. <laughs> there was something like that. You could have a Machiavellian underscore with him, whereas David Cameron was just sort of, you know, yeah. keep the PR tidy and, and get out as quick as possible. And we haven't had a spitting image of uh, Boris Johnson, but I mean, for, he's he the, the satirist choice for Prime Minister. <laughs> Well, my goodness gracious, yes, that would certainly be a tumbling ball of something or other. Most uh, caricatures of Boris tend to look like a sort of an old English sheepdog. Sort of, yeah, 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 yeah. Just speaking in Latin and not yeah. being generally aware of things. You, you couldn't, you wouldn't, a little of Boris goes a long way in satire terms. Well, perhaps not just in satire, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed, John, John Carshaw.